and actually it's an actual report, mm -hmm. but in some cases there can be a 130 percent increase in expansion of the apical node and 40 uh, percent in the penultimate node, the second node, uh, which is sig significant beyond pr probability. You know, it's not like it, well, it could mean something oh, or it couldn't. It could it's consistently in con in consistent. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, the controls do not show that same expansion. Yeah. And the expulsion cavities or the blown nodes where there's actually mm -hmm. a hole in it that where the water from inside has been forced out, in this particular sample, it's 18.2% expulsion cavities in the formation and the controls show zero. Hmm. And this is looked at under a microscope and counted right. very meticulously, examined scrupulously. I'd wonder First of all, that something has to hold this microwave energy inside so it doesn't run out into the field. And that mm -hmm. energy, the, the restrictive energy that delineates the field from the formation to be, is sound. And we have gotten a couple of hints from the circle makers. The first formation that, that is uh, on the slide is the Sri Yantra Mandala. If we can go to the slides, this is uh, a formation that arrived in a dry lake riverbed in Steens Mountain, Eastern Oregon, in 1990. This is a, a mandala, and in the field, the entire mandala was reproduced, 13.3 miles of lines. This Whoa. is mm -hmm. sound. It is a mandala mm -hmm. of sound manifestation. So they've been trying to give us hints that we should be looking at the sound, right? <laughs> or listening to listening it. Listening to the sound. Yeah, <laughs> opening ourselves to yeah. it, certainly. Last year, in the lower right-hand corner down here, this is the Om symbol. And again, mm -hmm. Om is the Sanskrit character for sound, mm -hmm. for the Om sound of manifestation. Oh, I think it's amazing, too, when you think of the Bible and the Word, you know, was the first thing that happened. That sound. In the beginning was the, the word. word. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And also it, it says, and God mm -hmm. said, let there be. So you have to have the voice, you the to sound, speak it. Mm -hmm. and then the manifestation. Um, I believe, okay, piecing the hypothesis together from many various people who have seen various segments of the circles forming, whether they mm -hmm. see amber balls of light, and this globe up here represents an amber, amber ball, ball of light. light. It's very, very high. It's a lot higher up than this uh, picture would mm -hmm. uh, suggest. I believe that the amber ball is guided by intelligences. Perhaps the circle makers, perhaps their helpers. I don't know that the circle mm -hmm. makers actually are in this ball of light, as <laughs> yeah. it were. Okay? And the f function of this amber ball of light is to, dis is to send down sound, and it has been described as a trumpet of, like, vapor or mist. And mm -hmm. it is exactly in the shape of the pattern. It, it starts to separate what's going to be the formation, every part of it, the inside of the ring and, and then the outside part and it separates it all from the field. And now the, the barriers are up, the walls of sound, and not only do they rise above the ground, but they penetrate deeply into the ground. That amber ball then discharges, perhaps, mm -hmm. the, again, this is my hypothesis, these little silver balls, these little silver spheres that some of you have seen on uh, uh, televisions. Um, Steve Alexander has some footage of, that, of it traveling across over a farmer's... Right, uh -huh. a little, when he stops yes, the combine uh -huh. and he looks, and also the Van Dorkheim uh -huh. brothers, a uh, German uh, couple standing on top of their VW. I think that these are the actual little mini laboratories, and this little red bib in front of them is <laughs> representing the Maser burst. Maser stands for the microwave amplification by the serial emission of radiation, and it's a very focused, narrowly focused, and intensely mm -hmm. hot and very brilliant light is created with the maser. So if each of these little mm -hmm. silver spheres shoots out an 18-inch swath of maser burst, and suppose these silver spheres travel at crop height, maybe a little bit higher, and as it radiates down towards the ground in a 1,500-degree Fahrenheit burst of heat, wow, just for nanoseconds, right. very, very uh -huh. fast, and keeps just shooting out this maser, what it does to the stalk is it dehydrates it. Microwave energy works on the water, and the water evaporates from the stalks. The cells holding the water are at the nodes, and so the nodes are very um, more affected than mm -hmm. the rest of the, the stalk itself. So as the water heats up, it expands, and as it expands, the cell walls expand. And as the cell wall, sometimes it expands with such force that it shoots out through mm -hmm. the, the hole in the, in, or makes a hole in the cell wall. 
I'm sorry, in the stalk, the outer covering of the stalk. Once the water comes out of the plant, what happens is that it wilts and it starts to mm -hmm. fall. As soon as it starts to fall, and we'll go over to the next slide here. Oh, this is why I think that there are three sequences or three silver spheres. You see the very clear tracks. There's three tracks there with a little standing stuff in the middle of it here. And it gives a very clear impression of suggestion, let's say, yes, of, uh -huh. uh, of three of them. Okay. I'm going to take this one in, in order to. Mm -hmm. What happens, I think, is when the sound barrier is broken, okay, here there's a, a defect in it. And off to the right here, you can see, sort of like if you're taking a stone and skipping it, the energies sort of hit and bumped oh. all along here, all the way down to the corner of the field, all the way off. And it's like a balloon. When you blow up a balloon and then you let mm -hmm. it go, that back, back, back force. Yeah. You know, this is very suggestive of that in the field. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this before. And another suggestion for the reason that I think that there are three is that all of the paths, now this top picture here depicts a ring. And it starts over here. And it goes around and it comes back over here. Okay? And if you can see here, each of these is in bundles of three. There's one bundle and then a second bundle, and then a third bundle, groupings, and then a fourth little skinny bundle over here. But those three bundles are very, is a very consistent feature, both in England and here in the States in the formations that I've seen. And it's mm -hmm. like the ending of those silver balls when it takes its track, its 18 inch swath, and it just lets it flow over. You know, Sometimes just they look almost like they're air brushed. Right there. They're just yes, <laughs> right. And we'll talk about that in a second uh -huh. too. The the uh, flow, the mm -hmm. appearance of flow. This is a blown node right yeah, in goodness. there from one of the formations, the Earth is Missing yeah. formation last year. Okay, now here's the silver sphere, and it's radiating with the maser heat. Okay, this is a representation of the maser heat, and the crop is falling. Well, they would fall willy-nilly if they weren't organized in some way. Right. And I, this wind tube comes along here, and it's a wind tube. Actually, I, I see it as higher. I see it maybe as half the height of the crop. And it spirals along and gathers them and directs the flow. I believe that the wind, as well as the maser heat, are programmed at the atomic level. And it gathers these grouping, it groups the stalks into bundles. Mm. and tells it, lay left, go left, go straight, <laughs> go sinusoidal. It sounds lay. like a total harmony with the earth, the wheat itself, you know, with a higher force and intelligence. The earth cooperation. energies absolutely mm -hmm. cooperate. Yeah. Absolutely, there is earth energy cooperation on this. Wow. In the top picture here, there are very clearly demarked wind tubes. You can see the way the groupings of stalks terminate at the perimeter or at the sound barrier in, in the spirals, in the wind tubes. It's a one of the clearest pictures I've seen of it. Now here's a, a very good example of bundling. Here the stalk comes up and it's pulled down and the stalk goes out that way. And you see the leaves of the stalks, the way they're perpendicular to the flow. Mm -hmm. While the seed heads are all parallel to the flow. There are two different types of energies. The seed heads go one way and yet the spiraling goes perpendicular to that. So that spiraling wind tube would account for it. There's another one where you see this, the cross and the X's as, as the leaves get pulled through while the seed heads again are aligned. This alignment of the seed heads is what accounts for the flow when they're all lined up the same way. Well, the two that I got to walk in in Chehalis, which we'll have to probably talk about more in depth in the little while or, or later, uh, you could lift them up and they were interlaced, there's you know, like basket weaving. Yeah, there's many layers of weaving. Mm -hmm. Here's a nice example of the uh, of bundling going up. And you see other, other areas of crop going off in different ways. But yet this one bundle is pulled mm -hmm. up very clearly. These are quite a few um, uh, examples here that I have of bundling. Here's one here. And then we also have the Chehalis example. This is the, from the Chehalis stock. Now, this has been walked on. I was in it after it was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this was already um, a week old. But uh, the I hope butter. I pronounced it right. Mm -hmm. This was given to me by a gentleman that flown over it when I came here in October, and thanks to mm -hmm. him. I can't remember his name at the moment. I would give him credit for that. But it's, uh, it's very similar to what we had uh, two years ago in England, where we had the sort of 13 um, circles coming up to a major point. And of course, we had 13 objects 
plow into Jupiter that year. Well, the stock heads were all pulled off to the right here in a clockwise flow, very aligned. So the seed head alignment is something that you just need to look at and feel and let the energies interact with you and you can recognize it. On this one, the stock is twisted. The top of it is twisted like a permanent, very, very kinky, and the seed head itself has been battered. You can see how ragged, ragged it looks from the huge turbulence, the very strong turbulence that's inside of the formation as it's, as it's going down. These graphics were made, the uh, storyboard was dis uh, drawn by Peter Sorensen. Mm -hmm. And this is um, depicting the wind tube as it's leaving from the center of the formation and spiraling out towards the perimeter and finally hitting this, this orange represents the, the sound barrier and it spirals up and then leaves that way. A very, here you see the perimeter stalks and this is the way that the wind tubes leave by the angles are the remnants of the direction in which they left. Have you noticed that? Did you see any of that in the Chehalis formation? Chehalis had a very complex lays, a lot of interweaving Perimeter stocks were great. And then two, one could go clockwise and one could go counterclockwise in the next, so it, you know, had that swelling. Yes, <laughs> right. th there was, uh, mm -hmm. in one ring in particular, mm -hmm. there was a counter. They were all counterclockwise except for one. Sorry. Here's another example of uh, some of the beautiful perimeter stocks. This is from England. This is the Windmill Hill Formation, the grand finale of the year, the most magnificent mm -hmm. that I have ever seen. And the energies in it were just extraordinary. And, uh, this was a... Uh, one that I discovered very late. It's in a grass field, mm -hmm. and it's a very old Celtic design. This was just outside of Devizes, which is very close to Avebury in England. And uh, as you see there, it's about three weeks old. Famous design down in um, Alton Barnes, the double helix, or so many of you see DNA it like that. structure. Yes. But it's and very interesting to note mm -hmm. that this was just two weeks prior to the announcement that they had found DNA in that rock from Mars. Oh. And when you check into the reports uh -huh. of that, they had intended to make it public two weeks previously, <laughs> but they delayed it because they wanted more scientists to check out their findings. So they delayed that report. Otherwise, it would have coincided proudly to the day. Hey. All right. Oh. <laughs> That's a long view. And, uh, and how long was that? That's a large that formation with a on lot of for parts. 400 feet in length. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's quite mm -hmm. a few circles there as well. Right. This one we called the church window. That's about three miles from where I live, just outside of Andover, and about a mile and a half from where I found my first crop circle in 1980. The great. Uh, <laughs> story to this is very simple. A friend of mine flying um, as a passenger in an aircraft from Exeter to Thruxton, and this is in a direct line to it, they have to pass over Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. That gentleman has flown with me since 1988, so he knows what crop circles are all about, so he wouldn't miss it. He flew around Stonehenge seven times at 5.30, taking photographs of the pilot flying the aircraft as they were going round. And he can assure me, or he has assured mm -hmm. me, that that wasn't there. He got to Thruxton, got out, the gentleman flew back to Exeter at five past six. That formation was there. And that is a very intricate, very pristine formation. That is it. There's 148 circles there. Ooh, uh -huh. It's 900 feet in length, and it sort of covers an area of 500 feet wide. Now, I asked the individual groups that claim to have made crop circles, you know, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And as they explain, because it starts to go from a small circle up to a large circle, back to a small circle, no one could work as a team until they'd f finished the previous for part. Mm. So it had to be started from beginning one and right the way through to the end. And they said, no way. It would no take way. them about six hours. Mm -hmm. 35 minutes we got it down to. Very good. Can you, as you're showing the slides, elaborate a little on what the analysis the wheat goes through? Right. At the moment, we have a lot of people now becoming interested. A lot of scientists have become interested. They've got different ideas. They're looking into the molecular structure of the crops. There is a mm -hmm. variation. They're looking into the difference in the soils, and we found that there is a nitrogen difference between the inner part of a circle and the outer part in the control mm -hmm. sample. 
And again, it's moving on. You see, each year you have to try something new. If, if, and if you find something this year, then you think, well, I'll try it again next mm -hmm. year. So it takes about three years to get concrete proof about what's going on. This one, of course, is a triple helix. Whoa. And this was just... <laughs>